How many sorting algorithms are there? Spoiler alert, not more than the number of fingers on your hand. No, actually that's not true. So in this video, we're gonna discuss some of the most asked sorting algorithms in our DSA interviews and then the mysterious inbuilt sort function of JavaScript, which most of us don't even understand how to use. And for more advanced sorting algorithms like merge sort and quick sort, we will have separate videos to understand them in depth. Alright, so first of all, let's see how we can implement bubble sort in JavaScript. So we are supposed to write a function to sort the given array nums in ascending order. So this is the nums array that we've been given over here. And when we sort it in the ascending order, that is in the increasing order, so it will be 10, 14, 14, 20, and 37. So as you can see, this array has been sorted. So let's see how this bubble sort algorithm works visually. So we have this website over here called visualgo.net and I'm going to give the link to this website in the description down below as well. So we've been given this array over here which you can see has been uh, you know visually represented over here. So how does bubble sort actually work? So if we click on this sort you're going to see. So what bubble sort do is bubble sort takes two items and compares them. So it compared first two elements that is 29 and 10 and if the first number is higher, it's going to move it to the second place and that is it will swap the position. So as you saw, if I go back, it was 29 was higher. So it swapped it with 10. So if you move forward. Now again, it's going to compare 29 and 14. So again, it's going to swap 29 with 14 because 29 it's higher than 14, right? So let's see. Yep. Again. Now with 37, it will not swap it because 37 is higher. Okay. Now in the end, it will swap again because 37 is higher than 14. So what this essentially did is it sorted one element inside of the array, the highest element, the highest element was put at the very end of the array. So now all we have to do is we have to repeat this process again and again and again until the whole array is sorted. So if we move forward, yep, you see 37 was sorted. Now again, we're doing the same process for every other element. And now again, it's going to compare. Now there's no swapping left 10, 14. Yep. Now the array is completely sorted. Also, before moving forward, I would like to mention my DSA sheet, which I announced in my last video of search algorithms. And I've received so many messages from you all telling me how many times you have encountered these questions in your DSA interviews. Therefore, I would highly recommend you all to download this DSA sheet from the link in the description down below so that you can avoid hundreds of useless questions on lead code and do only the ones that actually matter so that you can prepare for your DSA interviews efficiently. All right, so let's see the code for bubble sort. So I'm going to create a function over here called bubble sort and it's going to take the array which we're supposed to sort. So now inside of it, as I explained in the visual explanation, we're going to run two for loops over here. Why? So if you see over here, we had this array, right? So the first loop will go from the very start to the very end. And what the other loop will do, it will go to the number which has been sorted. Like for example, if I run this again. So if I click on sort, you're going to see. So it's basically sorting the largest element to the very end. So the other loop will go from the start to that element minus one. First of all, I'm going to take a variable and for the length of our array. And after that, I'm going to run a for loop over here. So the loop will start from zero. It will go to n or the length of our array. Now this will be, as I mentioned, is going to be our first loop, which will go through the complete array. Now the second loop is going to start from j equals zero. It's going to go to n minus i minus one. Because obviously if the elements are sorted at the very end, we're supposed to go to the very start of that. Now I'm going to say j plus plus. Now inside of it, what we will do in a bubble sort algorithm, we were comparing both of the adjacent elements. So if you see over here, we were comparing and if the element was bigger, we were swapping them. So simply, I'm going to have an if statement over here and I'm going to compare array of j is more than array of j plus one simply. And if it is bigger than the j plus one, then we're going to simply swap them. So I'm going to take an array over here. I'm going to say array of j and array of j plus one will simply be equal to array of j plus one and array of j. This will assign this value to this index over here and this value to this index over here. Now simply in the very end, we're going to return our sorted array. Awesome. Let's try to run this. I'm going to take a console log over here and I'm going to provide this array right over here. Now let's open our terminal and now I'm going to run node bubble sort. And yep, you see our array has been sorted successfully. Awesome. All right. 
Now let's go on and understand the time and space complexity for bubble sort. And for each of the sorting algorithm, I'm going to discuss the best, worst and average time complexities. So let's see. So the best case complexity, what could it be? It could be when array is already sorted, right? So if let's say this was our input over here. So if I take this over here and just provide it in this example and click on go. Now if I sort it, you're going to see nothing happens because it's already been sorted. You see, it's going to go through the complete loop once and yep, nothing happened. So simply it's going to be O of N because we're running one loop and this loop is also running. So it's kind of will be O of 2N, but since we don't consider the constants, so it's going to be O of N. Now for the worst case time complexity, it could be when array is completely unsorted. That is, you can reverse this array over here. So simply we're going to run through this loop over here and we're going to run through this loop over here as well. So that means this will run for N times. And this will run for n times as well. So this will be n into n, which is going to be n to the power of 2 time complexity or n square time complexity. But what about the average time complexity? In this case, what will happen is, let's say this runs n times, which obviously will run n times. And this, in let's say if the elements are randomly distributed just like this, it could be n divided by 2, right? So then in that case, it's going to be n divided by 2 multiplied by n, which will again result in n square time complexity. Great. Now what about the space complexity? So as you can see over here, we're taking this array as an input, but we're not creating a new array. So that means the space complexity will simply be O of 1 over here. Great. All right, now next, let's understand how selection sort works in JavaScript. So again, I'm going to go back to visualgo.net and I've selected this selection sort option over here. And we have taken the same array and we're going to click on sort and see how selection sort works. Now, as the name suggests, it's selection sort. That is, it's selecting something. So it's selecting the least element inside of the array. So what it will do is it will essentially find the smallest element, which in this case is 10. And it will take 10 and push it to the very front of the array that is it, because it's the very smallest element right so if you let's see if you play this so you see it compared 29 with 10 first so now it recognized that okay 10 is the minimum element so it assigned the minimum element variable to 10 now if we move forward it's going to compare 10 with 14 but again this is not the least element 14 is not the least element right so not going to do anything Okay, again, we're going to compare 10 with 37 just to see if, if there's any other element that is smaller than 10. Nope, this is also not smaller than 10. Again, I'm going to compare it with 14 now. But this is still not the smallest element. 14 is still not the smallest element. Still 10 remains the smallest element. So now see what we're going to do. We swapped 10 with 29 or we swapped the 10 with the first element. Now we're not going to touch that because array up until this point has been sorted. Now we're going to start with the second element. It's going to compare 29 with 14. Okay, 14 is the smallest element. Now we have identified 14 is the smallest element. Now we're going to compare again with 37 and again with 14. So now in this iteration, 14 was the smallest element found. So we sorted that after 10. So now as you can see, array up until this point has been sorted. Now same process we're going to repeat again and again until the whole array has been sorted. So let's see. Yep, you see, we swapped 14 again and now we're going to swap 29 with 37 and the whole array has been sorted just like that. Awesome. Now let's go on and see the code for selection sort. So I'm going to create a function over here called selection sort and this will again take an array ARR that we're supposed to sort and again, I'm going to take a variable n which will be the length of that array. So ARR dot length. So now for selection sort. If you go over here and see, this is this was the array, right? And if we click on sort, what happens? It takes one element and it compares it with every single element inside of the array. So if you see over here. And when it finds the smallest element inside of the array, it swaps that first element with that element over here. And now the array has been sorted up until this point. And now in this case, 14 is the smallest element. So we're going to swap 14 and so on. So obviously this will require two loops. One loop will go to the very end of the array. And the other loop will start from the sorted elements. That is, if the 10 is sorted, the loop will start from that element itself. So I'm going to 
take a for loop over here this loop will start from 0 it will go to array dot length or simply we can replace it with n since we so n minus 1 considering at this point we don't know what the minimum element is inside of the array so we're going to take the first element is the minimum element so i'm going to take a variable called let min index and i'm going to assign it to i now after that i'm going to run another for loop over here which will start from i plus 1 so the second loop will start from i plus 1 and it will go to array dot length which will be n so now simply i'm going to compare the current element with our minimum element so i'm going to say array of j is less than array of min element min index so if the array of j is less than array of min index then simply we know that the min index have been updated to j and after this loop is ended that is we have compared to all of these elements over here then simply i'm going to check if the min index have been changed that is min index is not equal to i then simply i'm gonna swap these two so for example if i you know run this in this case we're gonna find 14 so we're gonna swap both of these over here just like that so i'm gonna write array of i comma array of min index i'm gonna copy this up and i'm gonna put it at the beginning just like that and in the end i'm gonna return our array simple let's try to run this i'm gonna run console.log selection sort and i'm gonna pass this array over here let's go to terminal and run node selection sort.js and we got a sorted array over here great now let's try to understand the time and space complexity for this so actually if we compare best worst and average time complexity for selection sort it's kind of same so since we're running two loops over here one for loop is this one for loop is this deeply nested one inside each other so obviously in any of the case this both of these loops will run so n and n so simply time complexity for this algorithm will be o of n square and similar to the bubble sort algorithm we're not creating a new array over here so space complexity will be o of one all right now we're going to move on to our third sorting algorithm that is insertion sort so this is actually a bit tricky to understand so you, you need to give me your full focus over here so i've taken a bigger data set for this one so if we go to our visualgo.net and i'm going to select insertion sort this time so basically in insertion sort we would pick some sections of the array and sort that section along the way so let's say if we have 29 and 10 we will forget about the rest of the array and we will focus on sorting this much of the array so we will take 10 and put it on the first place so then this array will be sorted up until this point then we're going to move forward so let's see if i click on the sort button so for these two over here it's selecting 10 that okay 10 is smaller than 29 so what will it do it will move 10 to the first position and now array has been sorted up until this point obviously there can be more elements that can be added in between of this but if we consider just these two elements inside of the array this has been sorted okay let's move forward now we take 14 over here so it will take 14 and it will compare with the rest of the array since this part of the array is sorted already then it knows that okay i need to put it between 10 and 29 because obviously there cannot be any element before 10 that can be bigger than 14 so if we play it so yep, it compared with both of these and you see it has put it in between those now 37 it's going to compare with 29 and it will realize instantly that okay I'm, i don't need to go beyond 29 because it's already sorted so i can put it just over here now it's going to compare 14 with others so yep 37 is bigger so it pushed it now 27 also bigger it pushed it but 14 14 is equal so it can just put it right over here great now again 33 is smaller than 37 so, yep we can put it right over here 8 and now 8 is the smallest so it's gonna go all the way to the 10 so notice so you see it has put 8 at the very first place now again for 11 you see now the array has been completely sorted 
and this is what insertion sort is all about. So let's see and have a look at the code on how we can implement insertion sort by using JavaScript. So I'm gonna create a function over here called insertion sort. And this function obviously is going to take an array that we're supposed to sort. And then inside of it, I'm gonna take a variable n just like previously for the length of our array. As you may have already seen, for this insertion sort, we're gonna take two loops. First loop will go from start to the very end and the other loop will go in reverse manner. So let's say if I click on sort over here, you're going to see. So let's say we are at 14, right? So this loop now is going to run in reverse from this to 10 because the idea of insertion sort is to take one section at a time and sort that particular section, right? So that is what we're going to do. So I'm going to take a for loop over here. Let i equals 1, i less than n, and i plus plus. Now, for the second loop, first thing first is what I'm going to check is where the hell am I? So, I'm at this particular place, right? This is the current i right now. So, I'm going to say const key, and I'm going to assign it to that particular element. So, the key right now is array of i, right? Now, the second thing is we are supposed to compare it with this particular element over here, right? The first element that this will be compared to will be this one over here, right? So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take another variable const j, which is going to be i minus 1. It's pretty clear up until this point, right? Now we're going to run a loop. So we're going to start this loop from here and we're going to go to all the way to the start. So I'm going to say while and the condition inside of it will be that j has to be more than or equals to zero, right? Because index should be more than zero, it should not go into the negative. So j has to be more than equals to zero, yep. And array of j has to be more than key. Because if 29 is less than 14, then there is no point of comparing it. This is already sorted, then we can just put it right over here, simple. So array of j has to be more than key. Then after that, array of j plus one, what I'm going to do to it, I'm going to assign it to array of j. So what have I done over here? If this is more than 14, then I'm going to put 29 into this place over here and 14 will be moved over that side, right? So this place will now be 29 and then I'm going to say j minus minus simple. So this process will happen until 14 finds its spot in this particular array. So if I play this, you see, 14 found its spot and we have kept it over here. So after the while loop is over, I'm going to simply say array of j plus 1 will be equal to key. And this whole thing will sort our array. And after that, I'm going to simply return our array. And that is it. That is what insertion sort is all about. Let's try to run this. I'm going to take a console log and I'm going to provide it with this example over here. Insertion sort and then the example over there. And let's try to run this. Some error over here oh my bad uh, this will be let not const because we cannot assign to a constant like we cannot update a const variable right so I'm gonna run this again and yep you see our array was successfully sorted amazing now let's understand the time and space complexity for insertion sort algorithm so if the array has been already sorted then we don't need to do anything and in this first iteration itself, we're going to know that we don't need to go inside this while loop because all of these numbers have been sorted in the increasing order. So it will simply be for the best case time complexity, it will be O of n. But let's say if the array has not been sorted properly, then for the average case and the worst case, this loop will give out n iterations and this loop will also give out n iterations. So it will be n square time complexity for space complexity simply we're not creating any array so it will be the same it will be o of one space complexity great now i know you might be thinking that these sorting algorithms don't have very good uh, time complexities right don't worry in our upcoming videos i'm going to discuss sorting algorithms like merge sort quick sort which have much better time complexity but before that let's try to understand this sort method that is provided to us by javascript which a lot of us don't understand how it exactly works and it confuses us a lot so we have an array over here called fruits and it has a lot of fruits inside of it the name of fruits obviously so i'm gonna run i'm gonna take console log i'm gonna say fruits dot sort what do you think is gonna happen let's see node 
sort method. Okay, so this was sorted with respect to the alphabet that's on the first index. So A, B, C, D. But in D's case, you can see D is common in both of these. So it was sorted with respect to the second index. So in this, this has A. So that's why date was put before the dragon fruit. So yeah, I think that's pretty simple. Okay, let's take some numbers over here. And now again, I'm going to run the same console log with nums. Okay. Hmm, what just happened? This was supposed to sort these numbers, right? In the ascending order. It, like, it should have been 1, 5, 10, 18, 27. But it, it gave out this 1, 10, 18, 27, 5. What is this weird behavior? Pooja, what is this behavior? So this is happening because JavaScript tries to convert it into string first and then tries to sort it. And if you notice in our strings, it was taking the very first alphabet. So in this case as well, it's taking the first alphabet. And the first alphabet for those who have 1 are put first. So 1 then 10, then 18, and between 10 and 18, it's 0 and 8. So that's why it put 10 first. And then after that, it's 2. So it put 27 first and then 5. So this is a pretty weird behavior from JavaScript sort function. But don't worry, we have something called compare function that this sort takes, which will help us to sort our numbers. So I'm going to create a compare function over here, which will take two things, A and B. Now this A and B are these over here, A and B, like which it can be this A and this B as well, this A and this B as well, like it depends on the iteration that we are in currently. So now it will decide with number of factors that which number to put first and which number to put on a later stage. First condition is that if the number is less than zero. So if let's say we did something like return A minus B. So the result of that, if it's less than zero, then what it's going to do? It's going to put A first. So A comes first. For the second condition, if it's equal to zero, that is A minus B is equal to zero. Nothing will happen. It will put it as it is. For the third condition, if it's more than zero, if the resulting of A minus B is more than zero, then B comes first. So if you're supposed to sort them in the ascending order, we generally do A minus B. If you're supposed to sort them in the descending order, we do B minus A. So cool. Now we're going to take this compare function. We're going to put it over here. Now you'll see. If I run this, yep, our array has been sorted in a proper manner. And if I, you know, let's say uh, B minus A, you're going to see this will be in a descending order. But let's say if we have an array of objects, which will look something like this. How are we going to sort them with respect to this age variable over here? I want the person who has the smaller age to come first. So I'm going to take this. In fact, I'm going to take both of these. And I'm going to just replace this nums with this people. And I'm going to say compare function for object. Now inside this compare function, this will be A and B, like A and B will be this complete object, right? And this won't make sense to JavaScript that what it's supposed to do with that. So I'm going to uh, target this age property. So I'm going to say, let's say A dot age minus B dot age. This will sort it in the ascending order of the age. So now if I run this, you're going to see person with the lowest age comes first, then 25, 27, 30 and so on. Awesome. So this is exactly how the sort function works. Now, if anyone asks you how the sort function works or why JavaScript is a weird language because of this sort function, just try to hit them on their face with this explanation. All right, let's move on. All right, now let's go on and sort some of the most asked interview questions on sorting algorithms. And for that, I'm going to open my DSA book over here. Link for that will be in the description down below. So you can quickly go on and download this sheet and practice with me as well. So if we scroll down, you're going to see we have a bunch of topics over here on different, different array strings. And you're going to find a lot of good questions on each of these topics instead of wasting your time on lead code finding good questions. Right. So, OK, I'm going to st jump straight to sorting algorithms by clicking over here. And you can see we have a variety of different questions. So the first question is sorting an array using selection sort. So, OK, I'm going to open this in new tab. So the question says over here simply that we've been given an array nums and we're supposed to sort it. 
without using any inbuilt functions. The time complexity over here has to be O of log n, but we're gonna ignore that for now because this will be explained in the upcoming videos how you can achieve this time complexity. Right now, I have structured the questions in the manner so that you can practice for each and every sorting algorithms over here. So cool, I'm gonna quickly go and grab our selection sort algorithm from here that we just understood. So I'm gonna take the whole thing and I'm gonna paste it over here. Uh, so their array is called nums. I'm gonna rename it to array, ARR. And yeah, let's just quickly try to run this. Let's see. Amazing, it's been accepted. Let's submit it. And awesome, our solution was accepted. Great. Let's move on to our next question, which is sort colors. And we're supposed to use bubble sort to do this. All right. Okay, we've been given an array nums with n objects, colored red, white, blue, sort them in place so that the objects of same color are So in place basically means that we are not supposed to create a new array. We are supposed to use the same array and, you know, and sort them inside of that array itself. So we know bubble sort offers us the in place functionality. So simply I'm going to go to our code and click on bubble sort and take the algorithm that we've written over here and paste it over here. I'm going to change the name of this array to ARR so that it suits our code. Let's try to run this. Okay, let's submit it. Amazing. Our solution was accepted and you can see it's runtime was just 49 milliseconds. It's much better algorithm than selection sort. Cool. Let's move on to our next question, which we're supposed to use insertion sort to solve. Now this question insertion sort list, this is in this question, we're supposed to use a singly linked list, but we haven't covered that topic yet. So I'm not going to pick this question to, you know, do insertion sort over here because after we have understood linked list, we're going to come back to this question to, you know, attempt this question. So don't worry about that. So I'm going to simply go back to this question over here and I'm going to try to use our insertion sort algorithm over here and see if it works. So run this. Okay, accepted. Let's submit it. Awesome. So this was also accepted successfully. So great. All of these algorithms are working perfectly fine in our lead code questions as well. Now for the very last question, what I'm going to do, there's this question called kth largest element in the array. So for this particular question, I'm going to use the inbuilt sort method of JavaScript. So we've been given an integer array nums and an integer k. Return the kth largest element in the array. So we have this array over here, right? So to find the kth largest element, we're obviously supposed to sort this array in the ascending format. Then simply we can go to the kth index and pick that element. So fine. Let's try to sort it first. And to do that, I'm going to simply come over here. I'm going to say nums dot sort. And we already know how we can sort it in the ascending order, right? So to sort in ascending order, we're supposed to take two things, a comma b. And we're going to say a minus b. This will completely sort it in the ascending order. Now, I'm going to say return nums of nums dot length minus so this will give us our kth largest element. And also one more thing that I forgot to mention is that nums.sort sort, sorts our array in place. That is, we don't need to assign it to a new variable. It can just sort it inside of it over here as well. So yep, let's click on submit. Amazing, our solution was accepted and it beats 53.32% of users with JavaScript. Awesome. So yep, that's it. That is it for this video. Go and check out my DSA sheet if you haven't downloaded it yet. It's the best resource for DSA with JavaScript with all of these questions on all of these topics. You won't regret downloading this ebook, trust me, because it will save you a lot of time that you will spend on going through useless lead code questions.